Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4 BMG HOA Ham. We're getting back to the Ham Shack build out series and today we're going to get the coax outside of the house. We're going to break through the wall of the home here in the HOA and get into that single point utility box where the coax leaves the house. It meets up with some lightning suppression on the common grounding plate and then it goes up into the attic antenna farm or there are a couple of feed lines that are dedicated to operating backyard portable here in the HOA. I own our home along with the XYL, and so for me, all I needed to do was convince her that we needed a six inch hole in the exterior of our house. If you rent your home or you can't quite bring yourself to busting a hole through that concrete block stucco or stick frame home, maybe you should be looking at one of these MFJ window feed through units. We'll talk more about that in a future episode, but it is also an acceptable way to get coax in and out of the house. Since I went with a more permanent installation, I'll take you step by step through breaking through that concrete block stucco wall, and then we'll talk a great deal about how to customize this single point entry utility box that I picked up from DX Engineering. Let's head on over to their website now and let me show you precisely where this is. Type in grounding kit on the DX Engineering website, and this is the page you'll come to. You can scroll down through and here it is, the DX Engineering Utility Enclosure, or you could actually search it by the DXE-UE-2P. This is a polymer enclosure. So be aware of that, polymer. Here in the state of Florida, I didn't want to deal with metal. Metal, of course, is more sturdy than polymer. It will rust. Polymer over time being exposed to sunlight, you know, it can degrade. In my case, I've actually painted mine on the exterior of the home. So I've tried to protect some of that degradation from the sun exposure. I'm happy with this. It's my second one. It's only my second one because I changed the location of where I had this on the exterior of my home. And here you can see their illustration of what they used. So I picked up a second one when I did the total shack rebuild. I'm going to take you through the steps now of how I customized it for my setup. There are two knockouts on this distribution box and you just have to decide which one you're going to use, left side or right side. So that really starts with planning on where you're going to install this on your home. For me, it's a concrete block stucco wall, so I wanted to find one of the hollow cores of the concrete block. This block is eight inches tall, eight inches deep, and 16 inches long. If you never had to sling these around on a construction site, consider yourself lucky. When you stack them on top of each other using mortar, you have a very solid construction for a home or commercial building. The inside here is a hollow core. You may not have known that. So if you ever need to break through a concrete block wall, you want to be going into this open core, not into the end or into the middle support. The first drill was blind. I didn't know exactly where the core of the block was, so I drilled a small pilot hole. When I knew I was in the core, then I drilled a larger hole. Then I put my utility box up against that smaller hole just to get an idea where I was going to place it. I knew I was going to use a four inch piece of Schedule 40 PVC, so I put that over the hole, drew my line on the wall, and then started drilling smaller pilot holes until I knew I could get away from either the core or the end solid piece. Make sure you're using a masonry bit and a hammer drill, and then make sure the hammer drill is on hammer and not just drill. You'll see here in a second that the bit breaks through the wall and I kind of jam the head of the drill bit into the wall. That tells you I made it through the core. And then shortly hereafter, you'll see me drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling, and that's how I know I'm in that solid web of the block. At that point, just call it quits and shift to the right redraw your hole and get away from the solid web. Then your pipe will fit. With my circle now shifted about an inch to the right, I know it can drill around the perimeter of that circle and be in the core, the hollow part of the block. And I know that my four inch pipe will fit through there. So I just drill hole after hole after hole around that circle. Why am I doing that? If you just draw a line on the wall and take a sledgehammer or a jackhammer to it, you're going to do damage to the concrete block that you didn't intend to, and you're going to have a lot of repair work. Drill pilot holes and then take a sledgehammer to it, and it'll break out somewhat in the circle that you intended. 
No need to go to the gym today, grab your mini sledge and have at it. When you get the bulk of the material removed, then get a smaller hammer and maybe a chisel, whatever you can fit in here and do some finer work so you don't really damage this block. You get the hole where you think it needs to be, go ahead and dry fit your four inch PVC piece of pipe and keep working it until everything fits like you want it to. Good news, bad news. Blocks have two sides. You made it through the outside, now you have to make it through the inside. You can see my pilot hole was drilled all the way through, and now I have a 2x4 in the way. That was on purpose. I wanted the hole to come into one of the stick frame walls so I could hide my cabling, my coax, in the wall. One of the most incredible tools ever invented, the Fine Multimaster. This thing is expensive, but it's rugged, solid, long-lasting, and boy does it make short work of this 2x4. It can saw in places you just can't get traditional tools into, so it was a phenomenal choice for this particular task that I had for it. I can't stress enough the need to plan, diagram this out, play it through in your mind. It's not measure twice, cut once, it's measure five times, seven times. That pink insulation is being pushed up against door rock that is the backside of the master shower in our home. So I used a door opening just three feet away from this wall as my reference point to measure consistently to the inside location of my hole and the outside location of my hole. Again, plan this through. No more Mr. Nice Guy here. Knowing that this hole was going to be covered up by a chase, I got out the demolition hammer and took care of that inside portion of the block pretty quick so I can get my pipe in here and get this outside utility box installed already. Let's get the utility box ready. You could come through the top of this box. That's how DX Engineering shows it on their website. I'm going through the back of the box, so I have to drill a hole in it. It would be really tough to do this with a utility knife, so I do recommend a hole saw. Here's the common grounding plate in its near finished form. Let's talk about how we got to this point, as well as show you how to finish up some final details. Here I'm finishing up drilling holes to mount this to the polymer box, as well as holes for my lightning suppression. The little square boxes are right where the lightning suppressors are going to go, and trust me, you need to plan this out. Think about where your coax is going to come in and attach to the lightning suppressor, and where the coax is going to leave, and make sure you have enough room to turn and bend and fit all the coax in the right places. Now that all the lightning suppressors are attached, I need to cut off that extended stud that protrudes through the back of the plate so that this plate fits into the polymer box. Now on all four corners of this plate, believe it or not, I'm going to crazy glue a nut, and that nut is just a spacer so that the plate fits properly in the box. You do realize what you're watching in minutes took me hours over many days. Let's finally get this box on the wall. So I line it up to the hole that goes through the concrete block stucco and I drill a pilot hole to accept my tap cons. Tap cons are what you use when you want to attach something to concrete or blocks. After the first tap cons in, we level this out, get our second tap con in and attach this permanently to the wall. Back inside I go, grab my feed lines and put them through that opening into the box, cut them to a rough length. I made sure I didn't cut them too short. I just wrap them up in the box, close it up and come back for the big job tomorrow. Not only am I running feed lines from the shack through the garage chase out through the garage wall, but also from the attic antenna farm. My antenna farm is in my garage space and this mini split air conditioner chase works great on the side of my house. It holds the coax that goes up into the soffit into the attic antenna farm and it comes and joins here at the common box. We're gonna go ahead and get our common grounding plate mounted here in the polymer box. And then I'll start placing the coax from the attic antenna farm through the bottom slots of this utility box. And I'll pull my coax from the garage chase. And you'll begin to see how all the planning comes together and coax starts to fit in here piece by piece. 
as tight as this fit is and the bends that I have to make in the coax, I had to take into account what type of coax I was working with, what was an acceptable bend, how I could fit everything in here. It is a full box, but there's some room for expansion. It's just well organized. And this is why I've told you before, you really, really have to plan this out grab your mounting plate and draw on it where every component is going to go and how the coax is going to bend in this box and how you're going to get it organized. And I've also thought through, you'll see eventually, how I can operate backyard portable. It's not just an attic antenna farm. I always keep two positions open in this box to operate backyard portable. So I can run any antenna in the backyard I want here in the HOA to experiment with different antennas, use different antennas for field day, just try out new things. So there's flexibility built into this and room for future expansion. Between my shack coax distribution box, terminating coax in the attic antenna farm, and all the connectors that I need to put here into this distribution box, I made the investment in a really good set of tools that allow you to prepare your coax and actually get connectors on it. I used what I would consider to be a premium set from DX Engineering. I consider these tools buy once, cry once. It is an investment for coax termination, but I think they're premium tools. I have no affiliation with DX Engineering. DX Engineering doesn't have an affiliate program. The benefit this brought to me is that I had really good tools to make a lot of terminations. And if you only have one termination to do, maybe it's not worth the investment. But if you're going to be working with coax a lot, trust me, make the investment in this set of tools. I'll leave links in the description below so you can see where you can get them. No matter how hard I tried, I could never get the camera in the perfect angle. And quite frankly, I was running low on energy and patience. So I'll give you the general idea of what I did here, but in a future video, I'll actually show you a closer up, uh, more in focus video on how to use these tools and how to create coax terminations that are really high quality. Finish up this installation with some solder, screw it onto the lightning protector, one down, 11 more to go. Again, I'll do a future video showing you some better detail on how to crimp this connector, solder it up so you can have really good connections on your coax. Here I am with my colored zip ties again, and maybe you're asking what that's all about. Well, you've seen these throughout different intersections throughout the shack. My coax switch right at my workstation to the coax distribution box in my shack to this single point box here outside of the garage wall. And you don't see it, but up in the attic antenna farm, it carries through to there. I take a single piece of coax and I put a common color zip tie on it. So no matter where I am in the stream, I know exactly which piece of coax I'm working on. I could go into the attic antenna farm, grab a piece of coax with an orange zip tie on it and know precisely in the shack which piece of coax that is and which antenna is connected to my antenna switch. Exactly what is this shiny piece of flat copper strap coming through the wall? Let's back up into the shack and right beneath my coax distribution panel is this flat copper bar. Anything in the shack that needs grounded comes down and gets attached to this bar and then the flat strap is attached to that bar. That flat strap then goes out through the garage chase and then it exits the garage wall, comes into this single point utility box. Now we're going to cut it to length. We're going to attach it to this single point ground plate in this utility box. And then there's another large piece of copper wire that goes to the shack grounding rod. And then the shack grounding rod is bonded to the house electrical system grounding rod. And that you saw in an earlier episode. Here we are in our final configuration where I have two slots always available for backyard portable testing antennas, setting up special antennas for field day. Close up the cover. It just blends into the rest of the house. Send that cable up through the chase that was put on the side of the wall and the coax goes into the attic antenna farm, I'm ready to go. Well, that was simple now, wasn't it? What took 10 to 15 minutes of your life took me many hours over a period of several days, but how can you argue with this? The result is phenomenal. I love all the results of the hard work that was put into this and a few more videos left in this Shack Build Out series. Thanks for watching, friend. Talk to you soon, 73.